Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy to see you again in another video. In today's video, I'm going to explain you how to use the lag and lead function in SQL. And on top of that, I'm going to explain you the difference between the partition by clause and the group by clause. Okay. If you've not checked out the previous video on rank, dense rank and row number functions in SQL, do check out the description section. I have linked the video as well. Let's get started here. So we have this data set where I have the year, the ID of the student, the name of the student, the section he belongs to like A section, B section or C section and his max marks, right? And if you notice as I go down, I have the data for 2008 and 2009 as well. And one more thing is it is actually for the same set of students. So for 2008, I have for Aditya, Ajay, Ajish, Bharat and so on. Similarly for 2009, again, it's for the same people, Aditya, Ajay, Ajish, Bharat and so on. Okay. So we are basically comparing their performances in max in the year 2008 and 2009. Okay. So let us assume a case where we want to see how Aditya has performed in 2009 compared to his previous year 2008. So in the output, I need to see his 2008 max mark. And at the same time, I also want to see his 2009 max mark. Can we do that in SQL? Yes, definitely. By using the lag function, we can do it. So I would select everything as usual. Plus I would add the lag function here. Let me show you the syntax. So I'll say lag of max mark. So I want the previous year max mark. That's why we are using lag. Lag is like previous, right? And then the over clause as usual, like the previous video you would have uh, watched, I use the over clause for even the rank, dense rank and row number functions. And then we want to now do a partition, right? So here we want to see the marks of the student in the previous year, right? So in the end, the partition is happening at a student level. So we would say partition by and name of the student. Okay. And we don't need to do ordering here. Uh, we just want to see the you know names of students, their uh, max mark and previous year max marks. That's it. So order by is not compulsory here. So I'll give this as a name, alias name as previous marks. Okay. As simple as that. Now when I run this query, so when I run this query, you will see we get the table, all the columns in the table. Plus we have a new column called previous marks. Okay. And you see what's happening for 2008 max marks was 89 previous marks is null why because there is no data for the previous year right 2007 data is not there in the table so it's giving a null whereas for 2009 if you see aditya scored 79 and we have previous marks as 89 which is nothing but his marks in 2008 and as you can see as i just go above it is the same right so we are also able to physically verify here so wherever you know data is there for the previous mark like 2009 aditya got 79 and his previous year marks was 89, which is obviously here. Similarly, 2008, Ajay got 59, but 2007 data is not there, so it is showing null. But in 2009, Ajay got 63, and the previous year, which is 2008, he got 59, which makes sense, right? That's the data we have here, right? So to find previous marks, this can be really powerful. In future videos, I'll also show you how you can use this to perform week on week or year on year comparison analysis for financial metrics. Let's move to the next function, which is lead. So lead is kind of like the reverse of lag. So say along with the 2008 data, you want to see what is his mark in the next year, right? Instead of previous year, we want to see next year. We would use lead. The remaining syntax remains the same. And I'd say I'll give it a name next marks, right? That's the only difference I'm going to make. And when I run now, you see, so in 2008, Aditya got 89. His next year is 2009 in that he got 79. And as you see here, the next marks comes out as 79, right? Similarly, Ajay's 2008 mark is 59. His next year mark is 63, which is what is shown in the data. And uh, 2009, Ajay's mark is 63. But next year, it is null because 2010 data is not given here, right? So it's basically pretty simple to see previous year or next year marks and compare. This is a powerful way. We are going to see what is the difference between the group by class and the partition by class. Okay. I'll show you a simple example. Say we wanted to see the average of marks per section. Okay. So how would you do it in group by, we would say section comma average of uh, max mark, right? And uh, yeah, from that table and we would just uh, group by section, right? As simple as that. 
This query we have seen far too many times, so I think you should be familiar. So when I run this, what happens? Okay, for A section, the average of max marks is 76.45, B it is 74.75, C it is 74.4, right? So here what happens is the number of rows gets reduced. So we get ju just three rows, one value for section A, one value for section B, one value for section C. Let's go to a new tab and try out something similar but with partition. So I'll put the name of the section, okay? I'll put the name of the person as well. Then I would say average of max marks, okay? Same thing, okay? But I would say over, just watch what I'm doing, so over and I say partition by section, okay? And I close it. The original table as you see, it has 28 rows, okay? Now when I run this query, let's see what happens. You see, we still get 28 rows, okay? So what's happening is, so 76.45, we're getting wherever, you know, the section name is A, wherever section name is B, we're getting 74.75, which is pretty much the same as what we got here. However, as you see in the output, the number of rows is not getting reduced, right? So when we use a partition by class, the number of rows does not get affected. The calculation we are doing, right, the average here, it is determined by what column we are partitioning by, that's about it, but we don't reduce the number of rows. Whereas in group by, by doing a group by, we reduce the number of rows to just three. But here we have, you know, the same 28 rows, but wherever it is section A, it is showing that value of 76.45. Ajis also belongs to section A. So, you know, besides that we get the same value, but the number of rows does not get reduced. Powerful thing that, you know, sometimes companies ask in the interview. I hope you liked the video. If you did enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you again in another video. Till then, take care.